When you open the container for the data logger thermometer, you should have the following equipment. The thermometer unit, one or two pro bottles filled with non-toxic glycol solution depending on your order, an AC adapter with various wall mount adapters, one static suppressor, two Velcro squares, two AAA backup batteries, and a certificate of calibration. To begin, let's first take a look at the main unit. On the front bottom, there is a panel that can slide down, exposing various configuration switches and buttons. Now, turn the unit around so that you are looking at the back. The battery door has a small opening at the bottom. If you place your thumbnail into the opening and pull forward, the door will also become a bench stand. To close, simply snap it shut. When you are ready to set up your data logger thermometer, first remove the AC adapter from the package and select the appropriate wall adapter. To attach the wall adapter, notice the slide grooves on the side. With the open end of the grooves facing down, align them with the grooves on top of the AC adapter. Then slide the wall adapter into place until you hear or feel a click. Should you need to change the wall adapter, Locate the switch at the top of the AC adapter, slide it back, then slide the wall adapter out. When it is out, then you can insert your next adapter. The thermometer should be powered at all times with the supplied AC adapter. In the event of a power failure, the backup batteries will power the thermometer for one week. A low battery symbol on the display indicates the AC adapter has failed and the thermometer is running on the backup batteries. If no buttons are pressed and else appears on the display, this indicates that the temperature being measured is either outside of the temperature range of the unit or that the probe is disconnected or damaged. To replace the backup batteries, remove the battery cover, remove the exhausted batteries, and replace with two new AAA alkaline batteries. Insert the new batteries with the proper polarity as indicated by the illustration in the battery compartment. Replace the battery cover. Replacing the batteries will clear the minimum maximum memory and high low alarm settings. However, replacing the batteries will not clear the time of day or date settings. Static generated radio frequencies can affect any cable through the air or by physical contact. To protect against radio frequencies, install a suppressor onto your thermometer's cable to absorb radio frequencies as follows. Lay the cable along the center of the suppressor with the connector to your left. Loop the cable under the suppressor and back up again, laying the cable along the center of the suppressor. Carefully snap the two halves together with the loop cable routed through the center. Before we begin, there are a few things you should keep in mind. Tapping and releasing the advance button will increase values by one. Holding the advance button will automatically increase the values by one until the button is released. If you do not press any buttons for 15 seconds, the thermometer will exit the setting mode. When you change the position of the display switch while in the setting mode, this will save the current settings. Locate the display switch and slide it down to date and time. Notice the display shows the year, month, day, hour, and minute. Slide the display door open on the bottom. Press the select button to choose the parameter you wish to adjust. The selected parameter will flash when selected. First, the year will flash. Continuously pressing and releasing the advance button will cause the year to increase one year at a time. Holding down the advance button will cause the thermometer to automatically advance. After the year reaches 2100, it will roll back to 2013. Press the select button again, the day will flash. Again, pressing and releasing the advance button will increase the value one day at a time. 
holding down the button will increment through the days automatically. After day 31, the device will roll back to day 1. Pressing select a third time will adjust the month. Pay attention to the format the thermometer is displaying the day and month. Just to the right, it will tell you which order is displaying the values in. You can change the position of the values by pressing the Event Display button. Pressing Select a fifth time adjusts the hour and a sixth time to adjust the minutes. A final push will allow you to select between 12 and 24 hour time. If the thermometer is in standard 12 hour time, you will see PM next to the time. When done, you can either not press any buttons on the thermometer for 15 seconds or change the position of the display switch to save your changes. To select the desired unit of temperature measure, Celsius or Fahrenheit, slide the unit switch to the corresponding position. The minimum temperature stored in memory is the minimum temperature measured since the last clear of the minimum and maximum memory. The maximum temperature stored in memory is the maximum temperature measured since the last clear of the minimum maximum memory. Minimum and maximum temperature values are stored individually for each probe channel, P1 and P2. Both channels are monitored continuously regardless of the selected probe channel. Slide the probe switch to the selected probe channel to be displayed. Slide the display switch to the minimum maximum position. The temperature will display the current minimum and maximum temperature for the selected probe channel. Press the event display button to display the minimum temperature with the corresponding date and time of occurrence. Press the event display button a second time to display the maximum temperature with the corresponding date and time of occurrence. Press the event display button to return to the current temperature display. To clear the minimum maximum memory, slide the probe switch to select the temperature probe channel to be cleared. Slide the display switch to the minimum maximum position and press clear silence alarm button to clear the current minimum and maximum temperature readings. Slide the display switch to alarm. On the display, you will see the current temperature at the top, the current low alarm setting in the middle, and the current high alarm setting at the bottom. Slide the bottom panel down. Before we begin, notice the unit of temperature measurement. If you wish to change it between Fahrenheit and Celsius, slide the switch to the desired unit of measurement. In our demonstration, we will be working in Fahrenheit. We will set our low alarm for 28.5 degrees and high alarm for 43.3 degrees. Now press the select button. You will notice that low alarm label will begin to flash. If the current low alarm setting is below 0 degrees Fahrenheit, the minus symbol will flash as well. Toggle the advance button to add or remove the minus symbol. Press the select button and the first digit of the low temperature alarm value will begin to flash. Press the advance button to increase the value. If we are operating above 0 degrees, once the value reaches 15 degrees, it will cycle back to 0. We want to have the value 2, so we will press advance until 2 appears on the display. Press select and the next value will begin to flash. We will press the advance button until the value 8 appears on the display. Press select again to change the last value of the low alarm setting. Press advance until the value 5 appears. You should now see a low alarm setting of 28.5 degrees on the display. Press select and the high alarm label will now flash. You still have the option to toggle between below and above zero by pressing the advance button. Press select and the first digit of the high alarm setting will flash. Press the advance button until the value 4 appears. Press select and continue to press the advance button until the value 3 appears. 
and once more, press the select button and then press the advance button until the value 3 appears. We now have a high temperature setting of 43.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we have our low and high alarm limit set, to save my settings, I am going to slide the display switch to minimum and maximum. If I later wish to review my alarm limits, I will slide the probe switch to the probe I wish to review the alarm limits on and slide the display switch to alarm. To enable the alarm, I can simply slide the alarm switch to the on position. Keep in mind, you cannot turn the alarm on or off for an individual probe. An alarm event will trigger if the alarm is enabled and a temperature reading is recorded below the alarm set point or above the high alarm set point. When alarm event triggers, the thermometer buzzer will sound and the LED for the alarming temperature channel will flash P1 or P2. If the alarming probe channel is selected, the LCD symbol will flash signaling which set point was breached, high alarm or low alarm. An active alarm may be cleared by either pressing the clear silence alarm button or disabling the alarm functionality by sliding the alarm switch to the off position. Once the alarm is cleared, it will not re-trigger until the temperature returns to within the alarm limits. To view the alarm event memory, slide the probe switch to select the probe channel alarm data to be displayed. Slide the display switch to the alarm position. The current temperature, low alarm limit, and high alarm limit will display. Press the event display button. The thermometer will display the alarm limit, date, and time of the most recent alarm out of range condition. The symbol alarm out will display to signal the date and time displayed indicating when the temperature went out of tolerance. Press the event display button a second time. The thermometer will display the alarm limit, date, and time of the most recent alarm event returning to within the alarm limits. The symbol alarm in will display to signal the date and time displayed indicating when the temperature returned to within tolerance. Press the event display button to return to the current temperature display. No button pressed for 15 seconds while viewing the alarm event will trigger the thermometer to return to the current temperature display. To view the memory capacity, slide the memory view switch to the on position. The first line will display the current percentage of memory full. The second line will display the number of days remaining before memory is full at the current logging interval. The third line will display the current logging interval. To increment the logging interval, press the advance button. The minimum logging interval is one minute. The maximum logging rate is 24 hours. To help speed up your selection of the logging interval, press and hold the advance button. Once 24 hours is selected, the next subsequent press of the advance button will return to one minute. The memory symbol will become active on the display when the memory is 95% full. If you purchase the excursion track data logging thermometer, you can clear the memory after downloading the data. If you purchase the memory lock data logging thermometer, you cannot clear the memory and the memory cannot be overwritten. To view the unique device ID number, slide the memory view switch to the on position. Press the event display button. The second and third lines will display the first eight digits of the ID number. Press the event display button a second time. The second and third lines will display the last eight digits of the ID number. Press the event display button to return to the default display. The data can be downloaded directly to a USB mass storage flash drive. To begin the download, insert the USB flash drive into the USB port located on the left side of the thermometer. The download will begin automatically upon insert. The P1 LED will turn on to indicate the download process has begun. Once the download process is complete, the LED will turn off. Do not remove the USB drive until the process is complete. 
The downloaded data is stored in a common delimited CSV file on the flash drive. If more than one file is written from the same thermometer to the USB flash drive, the revision letter will be incremented in order to preserve the previously downloaded files. The data can be opened in any software package supporting common delimited files, including spreadsheet software such as Excel and text editors. The file will contain the thermometer unique ID number, the most recent 10 temperature events, and all stored temperature readings with date and time stamps. You may want to keep in mind that if the temperature is out of compliance but the alarm is not enabled, it will not show as a temperature event in the spreadsheet. After you download the data, you can clear the memory, slide the MemView switch to the on position, and then press Clear Silence Alarm button to clear the recorded data and alarm events.